Hello. Hello. Good. Hello. Hello, David. It's nice to see you, David. How have you been doing, right? I said, hello. Hello. It's, it's okay, you can talk. We're not in school, you know. I know we're in the house of the Lord, and everyone's in hushed whispers. Uh, but that's not how we should be. Because it's the Bible says, boldly we come into the throne and presence of the Lord. Boldly. So good morning, everyone. Well, that's better. I like that. That's good. That's nice. We don't have to be English or British, if you are British. Uh, we need to be um, more heavenly minded. That's what we need to be. So that's good. Great. It's good to see you. Um, I'm going to have to dash in a second. Good to see you online as well, by the way. Um, it's good, nice. I say hello to Ruth and Andrew. They're both not very well. They've got COVID at home. So we just can wait goodbye. Hello, goodbye. I wait hello to them. Hope they're feeling better. It's good to have John and Pam back. Yay! Nice to see you guys. No doubt they had a good time in Rwanda. Um, you know, actually, it's, I think Rwanda's getting a training place because I was on the... I was somewhere. I was saying I was on the bus. I wasn't on the bus. I was somewhere. And this bloke had a, a sweatshirt in front of me and said, Visit Rwanda. So I'm like, ah, there we go. So maybe that's a, that's a place to, to, be, to be going to. So visit Rwanda. And I'm sure they would recommend a visit to Rwanda. And particularly, we have friends there, so it's really good. Um, great, it's good to see you all. Your smiling faces. So I've seen Tom up my back, back. Hello, Tom. Nice to see you then. I've got John there as well. It's good. Ah. I don't know about else, but I've been really tired this week. So, uh, and um, yes, no. Friday. Friday, I woke up. And I kind of like, I felt, I felt tired, and I felt like, I felt pretty low, I felt pretty miserable. We'd had our grandchildren staying with us, and they took them to school, and I felt, I felt pretty bad. I felt pretty like, ugh, not good. And then I realised I'd actually hadn't spent time praying, which, you know, when you've got two little ones running around, who need to enter, entertain me, entertain me, um, particularly... Thank, thank you, Jesus. It wasn't six o'clock in the morning, it was seven o'clock when they got up. Um, and then I recognised actually that we were driving to Newcastle for, um, to drop Karen off at the studio. And she had this preach on, and I started to feel better because the word of the Lord was going in. And then I recognised it for what it was. It was like the enemy was just coming with a bit of an attack. And I was like, and I didn't recognise it. It took me about two hours to be like, oh, oh yeah. I think the enemy's having a go at me. So, when well, I dropped Karen off, jumped in the car, went to Pridham as a, uh, to, to my camp to see my day off, and I just prayed in tongues all the way there. And I felt my spirit lift up because you can tell the Bible says, He who prays in tongues builds himself up. And you know, we need to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. Because no one's going to do it for you, no one, no one else is going to help you. When everything's going wrong, when everything's in, everything's in a mess, there's only one person who's going to help yourself by the Holy Spirit, but it's you. And you have to activate yourself with the Holy Spirit. And for me, that's what we need to do today, to activate ourselves. I don't know, you might come, you might feel like, oh, I'm tired, I can't be bothered. I'm coming because it's Sunday, it's my habit, I have to do this. Well, activate yourself right now. Let's stand, shall we? If you can, we're going to worship God. But let's activate ourselves. So let's just say yes to you, Lord. So Holy Spirit, we just say yes to you right now. We say yes to what you want to do. Lord, we just, we just come this morning. We thank and praise you for who you are, for what you've done, that you are a great God. We just thank you this morning. We just want to say we love you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you. But Lord, we activate ourselves this morning, Lord. We activate, Lord. We just say yes, yes to you, Lord. We proactively, we... We just come before you, Lord God, and we just say, yes, Lord, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready to come to praise you, Lord God. And if we're not ready, Lord, make us ready. Make us ready so that we can praise and worship you today. Because, Lord, you are worthy of praise and glory and honor. And we just thank you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship God. I'm, I'm playing the drums, aren't I? I better go play the drums. I better go do that. So let me go. Don't stop without me. 
<laughs> yeah, she will. She started out and I know it's a lot. She'll be like, he's not running quick enough. Okay, okay, here we go. He's a bit slower now. <laughs> I'll show you a bit slower in a minute. I'll bless you in a minute to a bit slower. We're not playing the drums, so I'll be setting the tone as her bone. It's so like we're really fast. Yeah. 
We paid a price so we could have that joy. We thank you, Jesus, that you are before us. You made a way. The perfect Son of God in all things in the sons. He woke in the dark with you and me. He knows what living is, he's acquainted with our grief. A man of sorrow, son of suffering.
thank you, there is no one like you. There's no one like you. There's no one like you, Lord. No one could do what, I, what you did. You took our place on the cross. You took the place that we deserved. You took the punishment for our sin, Lord God. Our righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. But Jesus took it up. He took it up on the cross. Because he loves you. He loves you. He loves me. Not just a thing we say to someone, oh, because you know that's what you do when you get to know someone or he knows everything about you. He knows your good days. He knows your bad days. He knows your days when you compromise. He knows the days when you're on fire. And he loves us. And there's no one like him. And he wants the best for us. He wants the best for you. Best for me. The best of his little ones. He wants the best for them. No matter what age you are, you've still got a pulse. And I suggest if you're in the building, you have a pulse. Allegedly. God still has a purpose for you. He still has a purpose for you. Doesn't matter what the world says, but the world says you're finished, you're done with. Hey, in a world that says maybe that's the case, but hey, listen, we worship the one for whom impossible. It's not in his dictionary. It ain't in his dictionary. We worship you, Lord. There's no one like you. No one can do what he can do. You can say, well, that's impossible. Rubbish. Rubbish. It is not impossible. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. The only thing I think was amazing was actually God would choose to use me. He would choose to use us, knowing what we're like. So Lord, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you're the one. You're the one that we want. You're the one that we need. You're the one who flung stars into space. You spoke and the world came to be. If God be for us, who can be against us? Can I say that again? If God be for us, who can be against us? If you this morning you think the whole world's against you, or this is against you, your circumstances against you, listen. If God is for you, and he is, because he tells us in his words, if God is for you, who can be against you? No one. No one. No one. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We're so grateful to you, Lord, this morning. We're grateful to you, Lord. Let up our own words of praise and speak it out, our own facts. We don't need words and songs. Let someone else's expression, someone else's experience. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Come quickly, Brother, that can't be. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. But I'm just singing a new song to the Lord. Sing a song. Sing a song of thankfulness. Thankfulness of love. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We're so grateful to you, Lord, for what you've done, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sing what's on your heart.
He's glad when we can worship in Him. But when we speak from the heart, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Yeah. Um, Helena, can you come forward, please? I just want to introduce Helena. And she's a Christian, but a little while ago she wasn't. And she was on sinking sand. I love going to the beach, but there's some parts that are a bit wobbly. And um, Helena was on sinking sand. And she's going to sink. <laughs> and keep sinking to show you what it was like. <laughs> she wasn't really smiling. You keep going down. And she was sinking on sinking sand. But Jesus took her hand and pulled her up and moved her on to the solid rock. Christ Jesus is the solid rock. Do you feel better on the solid rock? Much better. And Jesus is the rock. The rock Christ Jesus. He is like flint. He set his face like flint to, to Jerusalem. He set his face like flint. And, and God has saved Helena. Big praise. Let's pray. Yeah. Yeah. She's on the solid rock, but she needs your support. Ron needs your support, Poppy needs your support, the family needs your support. They're going to be married, is it next week? The week after, two weeks time, they're going to be married. They need your support, they need your prayer. But she's on the rock, isn't she, Andreas? Andreas, I want you to come out quickly and just give a very short test when you do this. Oh, we're going to get the children out first and then Andreas. Okay, so children are going to go through because it's, uh, it's, it's other way, they've been sat very patiently. So it's really good. Yeah, keep playing with that. Hello, guys. I'm not going to talk that long because my English is just for five minutes. <laughs> well, the Lord is gracious. It's, uh, uh, he is extending my, my English uh, vocabulary. So I just want to uh, give back the Lord all the praises, all the glory, thanksgiving, whatever it is. I mean, uh, I've been, I mean, this week I've been through mixed emotions because I've been uh, into a, a big test, a driving test, which I did uh, pass. Woo! After, uh, so after three years, I've been practicing for three years. <laughs> that put smile on your face, right? Three years, although it's not that um, continuous because of the lockdown like that. But yeah, I started 2019 and finally on Wednesday I did pass. It's be not because I am good. <laughs> oh, you know, my drug instructor would, I mean, has told me that Elsa, I don't know how to teach you anymore. <laughs> you know, I mean, I felt that I couldn't teach you anymore. But yeah, I passed not because I'm good, but because God is. And I just want to thank the the prayer the prayers you know of uh, everyone who who prayed for me thank you very much 
uh, the Lord bless the kindness that you've shown me. And aside from that, I know that this testimony is quite small for everyone. Maybe some of you will say, oh, it's just a driving test, you know, like that. So it seems that to some, it's very small thing, but it's really, for me, it's like an issue. Yeah, forgive me, but it's like, yeah, very big deal for me. So I'm, so like what I've said, uh, this week I've been so, so, like very, very happy because of that. And at the same time, um, I felt so down as well because uh, the day before my test, my cousin who lived in Dubai, he's working, she's working there. Um, she messaged me saying that, uh, asking for a prayer request because she is undergoing a chemotherapy on the day of my test. So I haven't got any idea that she she has cancer. So she said that um, she has a second stage uh, ovarian cancer, which it really melt my heart because she's a, aside from being a cousin herself, she's very close to me, and I did, didn't know that she's been going through that. She had the surgery September 19, and we did not have any clue about that until. Yeah, on the day of my test. So I was like really feeling low on that day. And you know what amazes me? And at the same time, God taught me something about this. Anyway, she's a, she's a believer as well. So she, as she was explaining about her situation, she said, You know what, Elsa? I really, really uh, thank the Lord and praise the Lord because it's just stage two cancer. And you know, she just mentioned that, but it, it you know, it, uh, how do you call that? Like, it's like a punch in my heart, because I was like crying, because in the middle of having a cancer, she still managed to praise the Lord. And she highlighted that thing, like, I really praise the Lord, because it's not a stage four cancer. It's a stage two cancer. So, you know, like, oh, and I said, you know what, uh, you're amazing because you can still praise the Lord despite of your uh, your condition. And she said, yeah, really, Elsa, God is good because I found out that this is a stage two cancer and not stage four. That's, it seems that she's holding on that. This is just a stage two cancer, not a stage four. It seems like that. So yeah, with those mixed emotions like passing my test, I'm so happy it's very easy for me to up, uh, praise the Lord, thank you Lord. And on the downside of that, I really felt like sorry for my for my uh, cousin uh, going through that situation, although I know, I really know that God will do something for her and yeah, He will. So this morning, actually, God impressed in my heart, you know, I was like, when I was praying, he impressed that, uh, like the condition of my heart, the attitude in, in worship, in praising the Lord, in giving thanks. Because, uh, you know, this week, like what I've said, I've been telling Oscar, Oscar, almost every hour, I'm happy. I say, oh, Oscar, I passed my test. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. It's automatic for me to say that because I'm in that uh, condition. But my cousin who is suffering still managed to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's not stage four cancer, it's stage two, and God will make a way. So it's just uh, a lesson for me as well, you know, like my attitude in in being grateful, giving thanks to God and praising the Lord. Sometimes it's automatic for me to be thankful and just, you know, thank you, Lord, praise just slips out of my tongue very quickly. But when I am down, sometimes when I go to church, I was just like that. I can hardly say thank you, Lord, and I can hardly think of another good thing of what has gone has done to me. So that's it. Glory to God. And thank you for listening. Thank you. So the text I've chosen to speak from this morning 
uh, a printer off from the Amplify version, it's Colossians 3. And just as you share in that, uh, verse 12 and 13 says this, So it's God's chosen, own, it's God's own chosen people who are holy, set apart, sanctified for his purpose, and well loved, brackets by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with good temper. That's what you've got to say. That's amazing. So we're going to pray for you. Can we just pray for everyone else? You can come and do this. Yeah, we're just going to pray for a beautiful moment. We're just going to pray for a moment. Just going to pray for a moment. Just going back to what Mike was saying earlier on about um, just struggling uh, and then uh, realising that he was struggling. Uh, I've had a pretty rare week. Um, it's been ups and downs all week. Uh, and apparently I'm not great company when I'm on my downs, as my wife will tell you. Um, I think I'm hiding it, but apparently I'm not very well uh, hiding it. And she'll say, like, what's up? I'm oh, all right. And I'm sure many people can uh, relate to that. And they just brush it off with that I'm all right. Um, yesterday, that was probably the lowest I've been all week um, for a long time. I was walking, finished the shift at work. Uh, and I was tired anyway, which, which doesn't help. And I was walking back to my car, and, and uh, I was done. Uh, I was completely done with just life in general. You know, I, I just, I don't enough. Um, and then we went out yesterday to the burn, uh, and that really helped me, um, lifted me. And again this morning, just the presence of God. Um, you know, so I, I just got, as Mike was saying uh, this morning, just now about um, struggling and not really realising uh, and Matt will say uh, it's easy and um, it is easy it's us, me who makes it hard when I almost don't want to get out of that, that down it's really weird to explain, it's difficult to explain but you, you almost I feel like I almost want to dwell there and I don't want to dwell there I'm there saying I don't want to be like this Lord um, I've had enough of being like this, um, and I, for me it's a struggle to get out, and I just feel like there are other people in that situation, um, maybe right now they've been like it throughout this week, and I can't say I'm fully there now, you know, but I'm not perfect. Um, I just want to encourage anyone uh, who is in that situation just to get up and come to the front for prayer right now. Um, if you can't get up, uh, for whatever reason, uh, I'm not judging you. Just put your hand up if you want prayer, and then I just imagine there are other people in this church who are quite happy to go to people and give prayer, you know, so don't be scared to put your hand up or stand up and come to the front, because um, it's a battle. Uh, the adversary will, will catch us out, and he'll just keep on him on the pressure. He's not, he's not like easy going or anything like that. He will just keep beating you down, um, you know, so just as much as I'm on the rise now, um, it is a daily battle, you know, so please, if, if you want prayer, then please just come to the front and have prayer, because I know why I do. That's great, brother, well, just inviting the Lord, like to come, just come over here. This is church, okay? We don't need, you know. Does anyone else like to come up? We can shut Yeah, Roland. Does some people come around and rub, just come around Roland. Yeah, yeah come up over here, come up this way. Yeah, that's great. Well, let's not be just spectators as either go around and pray. Come and pray, come and some guys, come and pray around these guys. Come and go, come and pray as well. We need some big gents, we need some men to come and just pray for this child. Come, and come up here, yeah, Andy. Come and pray for this guy. Yes, yeah, so thank you. So, get a bit of space, yeah? This is church, okay? This is this is what we do. Anyone else? Because I know the group is some others who just haven't quite got there yet. You just allow the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do. Anyone else? You're not meant to do this on your own and struggle on your own. Dwell together in unity, 
you command a blessing. So we pray for a blessing on all the men and all the women here. We pray for a blessing for all those online that God commands a blessing when brothers dwell and women. When the, the church dwells together in unity, God commands a blessing. Paul prays for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because of this, since I first heard about your strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your tender love towards all his devoted ones, my heart is always full and overflowing with thanks to God for you as I constantly remember you in my prayers. We remember these guys, lasses, in our prayers. Pray for them then. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of his spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deep intimacy with him. Let's grow closer to the Lord and become more like him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. He calls you the full revelation of the hope of his calling. We need his revelation. We need his hope. We are called by Jesus, the full revelation of who you are in Christ. That is, the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us, his holy ones. And I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Wow. The immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honour and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. And now he is exalted as the first above every ruler, authority, government and realm of power in existence. He is gloriously enthroned over every name that is ever praised, not only in this age, but in the age that is coming. Amen. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you. You know, it's great, it's just it's great to see men respond, isn't it? You know, it takes, a, it takes a lot, you know, and, um, you know, God wants us, you know, faith is not just a theoretical thing, it's not about head knowledge, it's about, for me, coming on a Sunday, it's like coming, it's coming from like to an oasis, where I come and I'm strengthened for the week, that's what it should be, but I kind of get like, not, not topped up, but I get, I get, I get everything that I need for um, for this week. And that's such a good thing. That is so good. I'm going to come up here because I need it. Everyone thinks I'm a bit taller than you see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Daniel, for playing. That's good. You know, when the Holy Spirit's doing stuff, I just want to be around because. You know, when the Holy Spirit does stuff, you know, I could have 10,000 words and not do 100 minutes just with one word. And it's just so powerful. And that's, that's what we want. We want more of God. Yeah. We want more of God. Yeah. More of God. Because when we allow more of Him in our lives and through us, everything changes. Um, Daniel was going to play and David was playing there. It was like no longer slaves to fear it. No longer slaves. We are no longer slaves. 
We're no longer slaves to what people think, what people say. Stuff what people say. The only person you should give a monkeys, I'm allowed to say that, but what they say, that is God. And God tells you he loves you. He says, I have a plan and purpose for you. I want to bless you. So that you can be a blessing to others. You're a child of God. Amen. That's pretty good. Yeah. That is pretty good. I like what um, Simon was saying about how we kind of wallow in that kind of that self pity. I, I, was, kind of, I was just about there. I was just about there myself on the Friday. Until I kind of, I recognised. And that's the key thing, is asking for God, God will show you. The more you get into this, the more you get closer your relationship with God, you will, you will recognise things sooner. And you'll be able to deal with it. You'll think like, ah, I know where this comes from. So you, if you have thoughts to say, Mike, you're not worthy, you're no good, you're rubbish. I might think like, hey, I know where that comes from. That's not from my father. Because my father loves me and he has a plan and purpose for me. I recognise where that comes from. That comes from the other guy. And all he says is lies and, 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 and untruths. And even he takes a half-truth and turns it and twists it like a knife in you. So don't listen to what he says. Listen to what God says about you. This week, I've not, I've had it, it's been interesting. Um, busy, 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 busy. Probably too busy. And I need to get back to just being in God's presence. Just need to. Just need to. And um, we met a friend on Thursday, and he said, What are you preaching about on Sunday? And I said, I don't know. God hasn't shown me yet. But the honest thing was, I haven't really spent much time in God's Word. And I was just praying over the weekend. I felt God said this to me. He said, it's time for a spiritual health check. It's time for a spiritual health check. So, I time to time, every couple of years, I get a phone call from the doctor. Hi, Mike, Mr. Willis, can you come down for your um, men's well-being? Men of a certain age, you see. So I go down to the doctors, go down, they ask me, they, they, they take my height, they take my weight, they, um, they ask me about my lifestyle, how am I living, what am I doing, what am I, am I eating well, am I, am I, you know, they ask me all those kind of things. They ask me about my family history, have you got diabetes in your family, have you got this, have you got that, have you got the other. They take my blood pressure, which thank, thank you Jesus is normally good, and they take some blood. Karen says I've got very good veins, and the, the lady who did it the first time, I had all bruises all over my arms. She's like, she did not do a good job. But they take blood, and they screen them for diabetes, um, stroke, you know, preventative stroke, kidney disease, heart disease, all those kind of things. We need to do the same in our spiritual life. To have a spiritual health check. How are we doing? Not just a superficial, yeah, I'm great, I'm good, I feel good. No, really. There's a verse in the Bible which I, I really like. It says, if you think you're standing strong, be careful, you don't fall. Don't believe your own publicity about yourself, but go to the one. Because God, you know, sometimes he might have some difficult things to say to us, but actually, it's for our, ben it's for our benefit. This is the scripture that I had from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12, 17. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. So it says this. And it's been confirmed by what? Elsa. Where Elsa is. Where's Elsa? Oh, she's there. What Elsa said. It says this. So, as God's own chosen people who are holy, brackets, set apart, sanctified for his purpose, and well loved, 
brackets, by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, brackets, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with good temper, bearing graciously with one another, willingly forgiving each other, if one has a cause of complaint against the other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you should forgive. Beyond all these things, put on and wrap yourself in, brackets, unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity. For everything is bound together in agreement with each one who seeks the best for others. Let the peace of Christ, this is in brackets, the inner calm of one who walks daily with him, be the controlling factor in your hearts. Deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, you are called to be members of what own one body. And be thankful to God always. Let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being as you teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and have an independence on Him, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So first of all, we are chosen. You're not here by mistake. You might thought, well, it wasn't, I didn't even know I was coming here this morning. Well, Jesus did. Jesus knew you were coming here this morning because He knows everything. He knows everything about you. And he has chosen you. If you belong to him, if you put your trust in Jesus, if you are in Christ, yes, we write Christ into our hearts, but there is a sense that we are found in Christ. Our lives need to be hidden in Christ. If you are in Christ, you are chosen by God. You are loved. Amen. Well, you can look a bit happier about it. I think that's a pretty good thing to know, that you're loved. Isn't that what everyone wants? Everyone wants to be loved, don't they? Yeah. Everybody. I don't know anyone who just says, I want to be hated. <laughs> most people, I'm not sure about one or two people you know, but most people want to be loved. They want to be loved. Our world is obsessed with love. Well, love. Maybe not quite the same love that we're talking about. Love! God has chosen you. You are loved. And it says here, you are holy. That doesn't mean to say that we have our, don't have our responsibility to live our lives in a way that please God. Because yes, we're seated in heavenly places with Him, i.e., we are holy, but there's still this sense we're still going to work it out because we still sin. We still make mistakes. And as believers, we need not to do everything in our hearts to do that, but we need to allow the Holy Spirit to point things out in us. Oh, is this who I think it is? Hey, it's Mrs. Joyce. It's so good to see you. It's so lovely to see you. We are holy, but we have to work through it ourselves. I'm well aware of my mistakes. I'm well aware of my mistakes. I'm well aware of things I struggle with. And I'm not proud of them. I don't want to change. God wants me to change more than I do. Because he wants me to be holy. He says, be holy in the word of God. In 1 Peter 1.16. Be holy because I am holy. That wasn't just coined then, that actually comes from Leviticus. A book I rarely dig into because I'm like, oh my heavens, look at this. But in Leviticus 19 verse 2, it tells us, be holy because I am holy. So as Christians, we need to try, well that's the Holy Spirit, to make us more like Jesus. And we have to, we've died to self, so we need to say, Lord, 
I'm dead to self, but I'm alive in Christ. So what I did was when I recognised, I recognised, hold on a minute, I'm not in a good place. I recognised, the Holy Spirit was in me, it prompted me, spoke to me, gave me discernment. That's what we need to ask for more of. So when we make mistakes, because we do, because we're human, the Holy Spirit to prompt us. Hopefully before we make it. Hopefully, in my case, hopefully before I go, ah. I would like to hear the Holy Spirit shout to me, Mike, no! Don't do it! Because that's what I need. Because sometimes I feel, you know, and we're like, and you're feeling stuff just bubbling up inside us. We just ask the Holy Spirit to deal with it. Take it away. Make us new. To be holy. Because He's holy. And we're not made holy because of our own righteous acts. Because the Bible says our righteousness is filthy rags. It's because of the blood of Jesus. You know, I used to think the blood of Jesus, I used to think, ugh, that's a bit icky. I remember once we had a kids' club here thing here. And this boy bumped his head and blood just went like, he'd been running around, blood just, I didn't realise this, but head wound, blood just spurted out, it's like literally spurted out of his head. And we're like, ooh! And so like, and so friends got their hands in on it, pressed it, put some stuff on it and compressed it. And I was like, I used to think that blood was a bit, ooh, a bit yicky. But there's power in the blood of Jesus. Because without shedding of his blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. In Leviticus 17, verse 11, it says this, For the life of the body is in its blood, and I have given the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. This is in Leviticus. So they, had, they, they sacrificed animals, and the blood was put on the altar, and it made the people, it made the people righteous with God, put them in right standing with God. And it, it is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification Possible. That's why Jesus came. Because his blood shed on the cross made us be made pure. Possible. That's good. That's good. If we want to see God come and move and have power, we need to have something of the holiness of God in us. If we need to just not put up with some of this rubbish in our lives. And we need to take those thoughts captive. So I increasingly, I think we need to pray for discernment. Discernment, wisdom, conviction of the Holy Spirit. And it's not because God's going to stamp us down, because He loves us. He wants the best of us. He loves because He loves us. Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. What she shared about Elsa, about her cousin. Thank God, I praise God, I only got stage two cancer, not stage four. Wow. Do you know what, when stuff happens, I'm perhaps driving, for me, to drive my car, someone pulls out and does something stupid, and I'm like, what am I doing to that? <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday. We're walking on the beach. And my knee was hurting. And I said, my, and I said a naughty word. Not that bad. I said a naughty word. And I thought, how good is that? And then I started to realize, again, realize, hold on a minute, I need to do something about that. My knee's hurting. Me saying a naughty word's not going to do anything about it. Let me go to the one who can do something about it. So I started praying in tongues. That's what I said. So I prayed in tongues. I said, Lord, I'm sorry for what I just said. Maybe that's a bit too honest for you, but sorry, that's what you get with me. Because I'm still working through my stuff. But I want to. I want to be like Jesus. I don't want to be like that, which with, with the first thing that comes out of my mouth is something horrible. And I want to be like that. I want to be like that. I want to be... I want to have a heart of compassion. I want to have a heart of kindness, of humility, gentleness. So let your gentleness be evident to all. 
We're told in this world, if you're being gentle, you'll be, you'll be pushed over. Ah, well, God's on our side. Yeah. Let him push over us. Because God will shine through. So that having the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with good temper, that's hard. That's hard. Because I want to go and hit somebody. If I see something that's not good, I want to go and do something about it. Bear it with good temper. So how's your spiritual health check? You can see mine, could, my, my report says, could do better. What about you? You might just be content just to stay with it as it is. I praise God that my parents, they pushed me hard in school. I went to a grammar school in Kent, and I had days where I was crying because my dad sat me down and made me do my homework. And I said, I can't do it, dad, I can't do it. And I was crying. 13, 14. But he said, you can. You can do it. You can do it. I was glad I had someone like that encouraging me, telling me that I can do it. Because now I know, even though I'm not where I should be, but I'm not like where I was. And so that means it gives me hope for the future that I can go ahead and do it. And if I can do it, guess what? You can. Oh, nearly fell off the edge. That would be good. Bearing graciously each other. That means people are going to rub you up the wrong way. What? Oh, they say that again. I'm going to. Mm-hmm. I'm going to piss my mind. Bear graciously with each other, because they're not perfect. Neither are you. Just in case you were wondering. That means in our marriages, in our workplaces, when we're shopping in Morrison's and someone's dri- driving a trolley in front of you so slow, I'm like, get out the way! Bear graciously with one another, willingly forgiving each other. <coughs> if you don't forgive us, the Bible says this, God won't forgive you. So if you're holding up forgiveness, Deal with it. Deal with it. But I can't, I'm so hurt. Deal with it. Because it will deal with you otherwise. It will come out some way. Deal with it. It's like the man, he said, Lord, he said, he said, do you have faith? He said, I do have faith. Help me in my unbelief. Help me overcome my unbelief. He said, yes, Lord, it's too hard. It's too hard. But Lord, help me to overcome this. At least invite the Holy Spirit in. Show willingness. And when you show willingness on your part, guess what? Oof. You allow the Holy Spirit in. How do you do with your spiritual health check? Got a pulse? Yeah. How's your blood? How's your compassion? How's your kindness? How's your humility? It's not bad, really, Lord, is it? No, I'm not doing too badly, am I, Lord? Yeah, you know. Bible said God's opposes the proud with his grace to the humble. Do you forgive? Beyond all these things, it says in verse 14, put on and wrap yourself in love, which is the perfect bond of unity. If you want to be unified with people, with Christians, put on love. Like a garment. That's what he's talking about there. He's talking about putting it on like a garment. That every part of you pretty much is covered with love. And let the peace of Christ, if there's ever a time when we need the peace of Christ, it's now. You look at what's going on in the world. You look at circumstances, you look at all these things. Hey, listen. Do you think God didn't know that all this was going to happen? Do you think? Of course he does. 
he knows, and we're still here, he's giving you the grace to walk through it. He's giving you the grace to walk through it. We need to be, if we want to see people win, what? Wind? If we want to see people win for Christ, who come outside, we've got to be different. And I don't mean like, we are different. We've got to be like, there's something about us. The presence of God, the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding. But how come do through this just so calm? It's God. It's God helping me. I know one of the things when we were, Andreas and I were playing football, he asked me about my sister, my sister died. And he said, um, you know, he said, I said, he said, how's your sister? I said, I'm afraid she died. And he said, how do you square that with your faith? That was a question he asked. And that's one of the best ever questions that someone's asked me. Because that's, there's, there's your reality. There's your reality. And I said, Matt would have been proud of me. I said, it's easy. <laughs> I said, it's easy. I said, because I know I'm going to see her again. Because she didn't have faith. She didn't know Jesus, but then she met him. And I know I'm going to see her again. You see, when, when we just allow the Holy Spirit in, that peace of God that comes through us, it brings reassurance to other people. It does something. So, how's your spiritual health check? Peace. Be thankful always. One of the things, oh, I was going to say, one of the things I hate probably shouldn't hate it, is it? One of the things I dislike is ungratefulness. That really, really, really bugs me. Probably because I used to be ungrateful. I used to, I used to just get stuff. My family, my parents worked so hard. I mean, and they worked hard. They got loads and loads of really good stuff. And then I just kind of expect that's what you get. And it can make you become ungrateful, spoiled. Let's not be ungrateful, let's give thanks. Let the spoken word of God have its home within you. Dwelling in your heart and mind, listen to this, permeating every aspect of your being. If the word of Christ permeated every aspect of my being, when something happened, like I would my knee, I would not have said a naughty word. I would have been praying straight away. And that's what I'm going to go for. My friend said he hit his finger with a hammer and he prayed in tongues. I said, well, that's, that's a pretty good thing to do. I'm, and I'm aiming for that. But Karen won't let me anywhere near a hammer because I'm dangerous with a hammer. <laughs> I would hit my finger. I would put a hole in the wall probably. Let the spoken word of God have its, have its home within your heart, permeating your heart and mind as you teach and admonish and train each other. Sing in psalm, that's why we should sing. Can't just say, uh, when you need, you, you go through the bad time, you go through the bad time, you can't just say, oh, phone up the worship team. Listen, I'm going through a tough time, guys. Can you just turn up in my, in, my, in, my, in my cab and just come and play for me and then I'll feel better? You can't do that. We have a voice. So you can do it yourself. It might not be tuneful, but the Bible says it doesn't have to be tuneful. You just have to give a joyful noise to the Lord. Yes, amen. Look at Psalms. David's one minute is like, yeah, fantastic, yeah, that's great. Next is like, Lord, what's going on? I'm in a mess. He got his harp out and he played. God knows how you feel. So, let's, whatever you do, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, in dependence on Him, giving thanks to God the Father. So I ask you, how's your spiritual health check? Last time I went to the doctors, I had to go meet my brother again because he saw something they didn't like. But it was just a made mistake, thank goodness. Well, what about you? How are you doing in the area of holiness? How are you doing in that? 
How you doing? I could come around and ask you. I'm not going to. That would be me. It'd be fun. <laughs> so I've got the microphone. Dan, you just come and just do this. But I think just like to just. I just want to give us a chance to respond. Like I said, faith is meant to be. I don't just want to just. Well, actually, I'm never. With me, you're never going to get something intellectual that's going to tickle your brain. Because I'm not like that. That's not how I work. I want my faith to be practical. Practical. When I get up tomorrow morning, that I can do what I need to do. That I know the Holy Spirit's going to be with me, through me, working in me, and everything like that. And that when I go somewhere, when I say something, that God's going to use me. Because I just keep praying and say, Lord, how are, we, how are we going to see this, this world saved? How are we going to do it? What are we going to do? We always look for formulas, we look for things that we can do. But the reality is, it's probably, if I shone like Jesus, if when people saw me, they saw Jesus, do you know what? People get saved. And if when they saw you, they saw Jesus, they get saved. They were saying, what must I do to be saved? So that's why we need to look at our spiritual life. Where are we at? Where are we at with holiness? Where are we at with compassion? Kindness? Humility? How about loving yourself? If you don't love yourself, you can't love others. Can you? And you think, like, well, I can't love myself because, well, all the things I've done in myself. Well, Jesus has dealt with them. He's dealt with them. Why don't we just close our eyes a moment? Why don't we just ask the Lord? Because I'm, I'm not here to fire anyone's bullets. I just want the Holy Spirit just to do what He wants to do in your heart and in your mind. So, Lord, I just pray right now and I ask that you would, Lord, you to do a quick spiritual health test on this check. Lord, I pray you'd reveal things to us, Lord God. You'd show us all areas where we, you want to touch us. Stuff that you want to deal with in us right now, Lord. Because, Lord, you love us. And you have a plan and purpose for us. You see us. Complete seated with you in heavenly places. As we were meant to be.
Holy Spirit. I pray that each and every one of us would receive your love this morning. I pray, Lord, that we would know that we're loved. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that the wave of love would just wash over us right now. A wave of love would just wash over us right now, this morning. From the front to the back. A wave of love this morning, my God. A wave of love, Lord. A wave of love, Lord. just us, even just me, Jesus, you have come and paid the price for me. I pray we would know that. We would know that each and every one of us will. Thank you, Lord. That we know that we are loved by you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we say, Lord, I receive your love. Can we say that together? Lord, I receive your love. Lord, I receive your love. What about this one? Lord, I know I am loved. Lord, I know that I am loved. Lord, I know that I am loved. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God does not want us to struggle with stuff like that. So, yeah, please, you know, grab someone and I'll pray for you. Thank God so good. I just feel really, I feel really happy right now. I feel really blessed. I feel really blessed that we're in this room together on this journey of life. I feel really blessed that God's going to use us. I thank God for you, all of you, because you're great, you're amazing. God has great plans for you, even if you don't think it. Even if you don't think it. He does. So Lord, I just thank you for your presence here today. So we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. I thank you, Kay. I thank you, you made a way, Lord. That you shed your blood. That you did it for me, Lord God. You did it for me, for my brothers and sisters, for this whole world. Even this whole world did not receive you, did not love you. You did it for this world. And I just thank you, Jesus. And I just pray as we leave this place, we may go knowing that we are loved by you. And you have power and purpose for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we are going to have some tea and coffee afterwards, uh, which will be good. Uh, there's a, um, I could give loads of notes, but there's just one I'd like to give. Um, we're doing uh, Vaughan and Lane's wedding on Wednesday, the 26th of October. Um, they're going to have food. everyone's invited. If you want, if you're if you're free and would like to come, then you're all invited. We did say that, didn't we? I'm oh, sorry, I don't have to uninvite you. I don't have to uninvite you, yes, I do. You're all invited. There's going to be food afterwards. Um, Anna, Reddy, and Matt are organising to bring, so we're going to, they don't have very much money, um, but we want to bless them. 
So we're going to bring some food for that. So please talk to if you, if you want to come to that, do that. Please talk to Matt and Anna, and they can tell you how we're going to do that. There is a good Facebook group, I think, which said about that on as well. Um, I did try and read it on there, but I, obviously I couldn't open it properly. I had a um, fo Facebook faux pas. So, did you want to say anything, Matthew? Yes. Yep. Ooh. Maybe I can pull myself together for a moment. When, when Anna and I got married, and somebody came to, alongside us and helped us to organise our, our wedding and organise the food. Um, just in as much as we, we had a bring in share where people brought things. If, if you uh, would like to come uh, to, to celebrate um, Helena and Vaughan that day, come. If you can't bring food, don't worry about it. There will be enough. If you can, then bring something that's the best thing that you make. Tell us what it is so we don't get a hundred quiches and nothing, no dessert. Because no dessert is not an option, not in my book. Um, so, uh, so yeah, just, just let us know what you're going to bring in and just make the best thing that you make and bring it. And look, tell us what you bring in and maybe make something for, you know, feeding around five people um, and then there'll be plenty of food. All right? Um, so yeah, just, just but let us know what you bring in and, and, and who's coming. It's at 12 o'clock, um, the wedding, on, on the 26th. The wedding will be three hours, so we're well hungry by the time. No, it won't be. But, but it will be dinner time by the time we are, uh, even if they're taking their photographs done, we'll be eating. We'll be eating all the food. We might save you something there. <laughs> dinner. Uh, but it'll be good. Great. Thank you, Lord, for today. Just pray a blessing on us as we go home. And just help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, have a great week. Take care of you. Move the chairs inside. That would be good. Um, that would be great. Thank you very much. Take care. God bless.